crazy what we can do right now with just a 360 cam. Hello, I'm MXP. I'm a content creator, I'm French one, uh, sharing most drone photography, videography, also 360 immersive videos. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create such kind of video with just using a 360 cam and selfie stick. And we're going to review, um, since last week, DJI Osmo uh, entered the 360 game. We're going to check which one from the Insta360 X5 or the DJI Osmo 360 is the best uh, 360 cam actually on the market. If you do like this content, please subscribe, turn on the bell. And if you're into 360 video, FPV and drone photography, you're in the, on the right channel. So I've been testing these two cameras, so the X5 since months now, but uh, the Osmo since last week. And uh, let's start with, a bit with the art code specification. Um, there is there are two philosophy here. Uh, the first one is uh, sensors uh, versus AI processing, since the DJI Osmo has a bigger sensor. But uh, as you know, sensor is not everything. Um, it's been years now since Insta360 has worked on their projects. They do have their history. And for instance, uh, the RS1 had one inch uh, sensor, but um, it has a lower image quality facing X-Files. So um, Insta360 seems to be better on the image processing capabilities. Um, you have a triple AI chip system um, which uh, allows to add better noise compression uh, and color dynamic range uh, which that you don't have actually on the Osmo 360 now and that is giving as you will see in the, the next uh, shots um, a better noise and a better image processing DJI went with a bigger one chip sensor but uh, with source sensor and a bigger processing uh, the you're getting a better result uh, the insta 360 um, is, is able to film at 8k at uh, 30 frames per second and 5.7k at 60 frames per second uh, in a 8-bit log uh, whereas um, DJI specification are a little bit higher for instance it's a 10 log on, on this camera um, if you want uh, a better and bigger um, quality uh, for now DJI is the best according to specification but as you can see on this uh, comparison uh, I've made both uh, shots with the same specification and the same settings as you can see on screen and the the, the backend processing and the way to edit on Insta 65 as you see X5 sorry is uh, is much better uh, I've also made um, comparison uh, from the photography and for uh, the one who are still using uh, those type of cameras about uh, to shoot um, on the camera uh, you can shoot at uh, 120 megapixel on the dji uh, resolution but as you can see on the very same day very same location and i was holding uh, both uh, my cameras uh, within the, on each arm at the same time uh, you, as you can see the image quality um, is, is way better on the Insta X5 even if it's not only shooting at 72 megapixels but um, the 120 will give you more space to crop but the image quality uh, will be even better on the X5 so now uh, let's go beyond specification the first thing I've noticed is that uh, footage seems to really to be darker uh, on the DJI camera. Uh, if you set the very same settings, uh, and I've tried on star lapses and uh, on daylight shots, uh, you will need to have uh, to open your ISO and to lower uh, to higher your ISO to have the the right uh, dark areas. So um, even if in auto mode, it seems to make a decent work. Uh, if you want to go beyond this, uh, the, the pre program settings um, that Yosmo is using, uh, you will need to, to open to higher your ISO. As you can see on this footage, 
uh, the stabilization on both camera is pretty good but uh, sometimes you have stitching issue and that's a very uh, important part of shooting with 360 cameras and the issue is even harder when you have obvious color differences uh, between segments so uh, the footage is not usable uh, it's probably very problematic with uh, bright, bright backgrounds color wars and so on um, and uh, as render, uh, you will, we will see uh, later uh, when I'm gonna show you how to edit on the app that uh, you, you have really low slow processing time and the rendering uh, uh, on my benches is about 60 seconds uh, for the same duration on the JS mall, whereas on the X5 is only taking 47 sec seconds. So on that one, uh, the X5 AI stitching is really better and consistent with the color and the old 360 uh, sphere. What I do like about the X5 is that uh, whenever you're shooting in hollow and using a additive tone and things I already shared before, uh, you will you will be sure that you will get the right results. And uh, using, uh, I didn't show both the cameras, but uh, all of them, I do have a small screen, 2.5 ear and two inches here uh, which is um, I, uh, what I don't like for instance about this the screen is that uh, it's in a landscape mode and most of the time you're using a camera this way so you have to swipe on a very tiny fine very tiny screen and the controls are not very easy to use and um, the colors you see on the screen are not exactly matching the one you will get uh, when using and showing your footage so what I do like a little bit more on the X5 is that you are this big screen you can swipe very easily all the controls are working very efficiently and uh, what, she, we, what is better is that you will see what you will get and that's very important when you're shooting also, uh, either a 360 video or you're putting it on a free frame regarding the, the tone let's face adaptive tone with the 10 bits uh, that's both different approaches um, to dynamic range, but uh, you, as I said, you have 10 bits lock on the DJI, so you have a little bit more uh, flexibility on post production. But uh, since the image is heavily compressed, uh, you have detail lost that can be recovered, and you're trading uh, immediate usability. Uh, for post-production control and that's not what we want uh, with the adaptive tone and the HDR records uh, you have more light shadow details a greater dynamic range and directly uh, from the camera uh, you have no post-production required and if you're not or don't want to spend a lot of time in post-production uh, X5 is, is waiting all the way you can film inside and outside uh, with more bright sunlight, uh, deep shadows, clear skies uh, with the X5 and it's really better than uh, the DJI Osmo. You have better facial details, more natural colors, uh, we'll sell it for instance uh, on this footage and without any post production just to the uh, settings sorry just to, uh, just setting the x5 adaptive tone if you don't have any uh, experience or you're not an expert on even if you're an expert and as you see right for instance right now um, the dji 360 uh, shows obvious underexposed indoors and overexposed outdoors and that's very hard to mix and to give the 360 immersive dimension regarding low lights you have two different ways to handle it uh, but uh, my test have revealed uh, issues with DJI um, you have color accuracy problems uh, for instance in low light uh, you have more green bluish tint uh, skin toes and uh, that's not usable for if you're, you plan to use these on people and for you uh, think it low like uh, you have uh, the the stretch marks uh, which is the way that the camera is is stitching together all the, uh, the the two lenses so once again uh, you it's ruining your 360 footage pure with video mode on the x5 with the latest summer update and adaptive tones and you have more consistency on color representation and you can fix it in, in post even if you have your a little issue so both are the, are the same distance uh, we're gonna see the sound check here on the x5 
and then on the DJI Osmo. And let's move all around to see how it's handling the light change. Uh, uh, walking with it just to check the motion gesture and how it's stabilizing shots. Now let's move to stabilization. This is a footage I made with the two uh, camera on sticks and I was running down the park as you can see and both of them are really great. On DJI it's called DJI Horizon Steady and Rock Steady 3 and on Star 364 it's full state. Um, both of them are impressive there is no difference and both of them even if you're for instance you're shooting um, FPV with them will do the job. Regarding editing, um, what the, the experience, both of them do have a mobile app and uh, for, for DJI it's a Mimo app and for the X5 it's an Insta360 app. The Insta360 app is way more complete than the DJI app. Uh, you have basic way to edit your shots. Uh, what I do like about the Insta360 app is that if you do not have ideas or way to know how to shoot things, what you can do is use the template and it's gonna give you all the, the, the requirements and all the settings you will have to make to make the shot. For instance, you just have to set your X5 on video mode using 8K, 3080p, uh, 30B, sorry, and then you will have all the material you will need to make such kind of shorts. It's uh, gonna be a very good way to start uh, if you are not a professional but you want to create and start creating and you don't add this on the Osmo. Um, these settings on the, Insta, if, uh, on the Insta360 app are also very useful when you want to edit them later. You just have to select your model. Then uh, for instance you want to go to startups and we have start trace, go to startups, select the model, select the file you've made and then do let the app do the process. And then you can edit later, doing some effect and so on. Uh, with the 360, the Osmo Mimo app, sorry, DJI Mimo app, uh, you don't add this template and you have to think, even if uh, the app is already good enough just to let you edit the way you want, it's already have uh, all the settings, the effect, the templates, and the vlogging, for instance, template and so on you want to do for social medias and so on. Uh, you don't have, you don't know, for instance, how to stitch immediately a uh, Star Labs is shot. It's going to be previewed as video, but that maybe that's not the way you want to use it. Uh, I not, you cannot, for instance, also fix colors directly uh, within the app. So for, for me, the Insta360 is really much better. Uh, another problem I faced with the desktop software, uh, for instance, on this shot, I was trying to um, follow an active track myself directly using the software, and it seems completely lost without detecting. First of all, um, as you can see, there is no cross in the middle of the screen showing you where is the point of view, and that's very useful on the Insta360 app just to be sure that once you want to do, for instance, a looping around or be sure that your subject is in the right center of the frame, you don't have this help, this little cross to help, and that's not very practical uh, on the GI Studio. And then uh, the active track uh, doesn't dictate immediately, for instance, people, which gonna be helpful if you want to save time. And Sometimes it just lost or it can track uh, as efficiently as Insta360 app. As you can see now, uh, the Insta360 app has detected my black shirt and managed all the way just to actually track it where DJI Studio went completely lost and I have to do it myself. So once again, Insta360 is really better uh, if you're considering using a desktop software app. Regarding the export and speed and workflow, as I said, the X5 uh, AI stitches is about 44 second, 47 second, and um, the DJI is about 28% lower. Regarding uh, video exports, uh, my test led to show that um, the Anta360 app is taking um, 50, is 15 percent faster than the DJI Osmo. Just to finish, to give you um, a little tips and feedback, uh, this camera do have uh, internal storage about 180, 188 giga. 
by it, so you have to put an SD card in it. But practical if you forgot to put your card in it, but that's a good point for Insta360. But what is better for me is that these are also action cams, so you can shoot at the very beginning of the shot, uh, clips, moving clips, uh, and um, the Insta X5 do have replaceable length, whereas the DJI uh, not. So if you're crashing your DJI Osmo, um, you, you just have, you will have to send it back to us to DJI and get one back and or your camera is lost and that's about 600 euros lost whereas with the S5 you just have to change the lens you have replaceable kit which is our which are about 38 or 40 euros so that's a game changer especially for the for you FPV guys the last step is regarding battery um, but the battery is bigger on the X5s and you have more time to shoot uh, that's not a huge difference but that that could help if you don't want to change your battery most of the time just to finish about breath range and to give you my conclusion both of them are uh, around the same price about 550 euros uh, this one as i said at 105 gigabytes built-in storage um, a bit more of technical specificity for instance um, 8K at 50 frames per second, that means recording, uh, but uh, it doesn't have lens replacement and the wall uh, Insta360 um, ecosystem, the cloud storage, uh, which I, I didn't mention, but you can store your files on the cloud just to get them and the, the camera will synchronize itself. Uh, replaceable lens, which are a game changer if you want to make some risky shot and want to adjust, uh, ruin your camera. And uh, all the ecosystem is major and more major on the Insta360 part. And um, the the accessories, everything is a little bit better. The software, as I said, so for now, DJI, I've tried to enter uh, the 360 uh, gear and the C360 war. Uh, with the Osmo 360, but the reference will still remain the Insta X5. I hope uh, this comparison and all the, the the shots I've made have helped you. Uh, if it does, drop a comment down below, and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye.